for really most of my life because of the changes I have seen in the ocean. It seems that we really must take action for the ocean that is comparable to what has been done for the land with national parks, with protected areas, partly because it works, where you have areas that provide sources of renewal to restore the fish, to, to provide stability for the systems that are so important, not just for the ocean, but for us. So I call these places hope spots. And all of the Gulf of California is one big blue hope spot. But Cabo Pulmo has an enhanced importance. This place, it is truly a jewel, one that should be protected and respected because of its enormous value to the people who live here as a source of, of, of constantly renewing the health of the ocean. Pero este paraíso también tiene su infierno. La empresa española Hans Urbana pretende construir un megaproyecto turístico llamado Cabo Cortés en los límites del Parque Nacional de Cabo Pulmo, con la instalación de una marina con 490 marres, dos campos de golf y 30.000 cuartos sobre 3.800 hectáreas, lo que representaría una capacidad habitacional similar a la de Cancún. Aunque la Secretaría del Medio Ambiente ya había autorizado el proyecto, organizaciones ambientalistas lograron que las autoridades revisen nuevamente el manifiesto de impacto ambiental del proyecto Cabo Cortés. ¿Usted sabía eh, que se pretende construir un mega desarrollo eh, turístico eh, en, en esta zona y que puede poner en riesgo eh, la misma, el mismo ecosistema marino? I'm aware of the project known as Cabo Cortez. Seems somehow to be a very fitting name for a project that comes to conquer <laughs> the wild. I hope that, that people will think again about the best, highest use of this area because it's so easy to destroy. It's so in such a short time you can undo what has taken literally millions of years to put into place. In a few months, in a few years, you can just wipe out and change the, all of this that has taken so long to develop in a positive sense. This, these reefs, these communities, and on the land as well, it all ties together. The land, the sky, the ocean, the, the wildlife, the wild creatures. That's what makes the planet hospitable for us. We need to treasure this for what it is. Too many people in this area can destroy what is, has taken basically millions of years to put together and we can, we can diminish it, destroy it, undermine it. So there must be a better way there is a better way for people to enjoy this treasure and derive the economic benefits without destroying it. It it's, it's, seems so obvious. There are many examples of how you can work with nature, derive the benefits without losing the, the value that is inherently there. And, and this is the, the moment, this crossroads. Never before have there been such pressures on beautiful wild places such as Cabo Fumo. Never again will there be a chance to protect it. It seemed like a good idea with golf courses and big hotels, lots of people in a small space. But there is a better way, and there are examples right here in Baja, but around the world. How do you get the value of this beautiful area and keep the value and give back to the people who live here in a way that keeps on giving and giving instead of cutting it so that it becomes something else. It's not, it's not what we now know and love as Cabo Pumo. 
it might become a, a changed place, but not a place that continues in the same way. Pero qué decirle eh, a los gobiernos, a las autoridades eh, que argumentan que un desarrollo eh, de este tipo generaría empleos. Before even considering putting in a large structure to accommodate large numbers of people and golf courses and all of the things that people think that they want or believe that would be valuable. Think about where does the water come from? This is a desert and this should be treasured and, and embraced for what it is and loved for what it is and valued for what it is. To come and treat it with respect, to understand that you just it's just simply inappropriate to try to put too many people in a place where there isn't enough water. And what do you do with the wastes that are generated in this in this place that has never had that kind of impact in all preceding history? What about what goes into the atmosphere as you generate power to to support all of the things that may be appropriate in a city, but to put such development here would destroy it. It would you'd lose something that you cannot recover because once it's gone, there's no way that you can actually restore this amazing gem, this amazing place. I've seen it happen all over the world. I've lived long enough. I spent many years in Florida where the changes have been even more dramatic than some of what I have seen here. When you talk to people, they, they say, if only we could take what we now know and go back 50 years, 30 years, even 20 years, and start over, we could do it better. We would be more aware of how we deal with water, how we deal with power, how we deal with the lives of the people that there are ways to have economic benefits that are truly enduring without destroying what makes people want to come here in the first place. After a while, the, the very values that attract people here are diminished if you try to get too many in, in a place that is not able to truly support them. So, this is the time to be wise This is the time to truly value those things that we can't put back together again once they're gone. And to realize this is the treasure. This is the treasure. And there, there, it's certainly possible to accommodate people here, to give back to the community, to provide jobs. But they're real jobs, not, not ones that are supporting a, a structure that is going to undermine the nature of this place. Es una cuestión proteger los ecosistemas marinos, proteger las áreas naturales. Es una cuestión que tiene que ver más con recursos, con dinero para proteger o tiene que ver más con una voluntad política no solo de las autoridades, sino incluso de la misma de la misma comunidad. In order to maintain the integrity of a system like this you really have to just let nature do her thing. <laughs> and it takes resources, perhaps, to educate people. It takes resources to protect what is here. But mainly it takes political will to understand that in our time, on our watch, we have the chance to do things based on the wisdom that we now have or to, to lose it. Uh, public support is part of it, but, but political will driven by the public is, is really what is needed. Now that we know, we do know now that it's easy to destroy, that we can't put things back together again. Once, once the fish are gone, once we have drawn the water over, taken too much, that the system is put out of kilter and isn't functioning, 
we wish we could go back, but we can't. Now we even be, we, we don't have to lose what's here. We have the chance. The ocean, this is one example, this piece of the ocean, generates the oxygen that we breathe. Seventy percent of the oxygen that we take for granted in the air comes from the small organisms in the ocean that gather sunlight, that take carbon dioxide and generate oxygen and generate food for the ocean. We can disrupt them. In the, in the, since 1950, 40% of the plankton in the ocean is gone. 90% many of the big fish, like the sharks, the groupers, the snappers, the swordfish, the marlin, 90% gone. We have a chance with what remains, the 10% of the sharks, the marlin, the tunas, to maintain the health of the ocean that keeps us alive too. The ocean is our life support system. It isn't just the fish that require the ocean. We require the ocean too. And here in Mexico, it's a privilege, privilege to have Cabo Fulmo and, and the whole gulf and this beautiful peninsula that is, it's a, it's a recognized as, a, as world heritage, but it's, it's for the people of Mexico, a treasure. You can diminish that treasure. It, it doesn't seem right somehow that people from outside should come here and take the assets to, to build something that will draw down and destroy the nature of the water, the nature of the air, the nature of the fresh water that it requires. This is a place that people in Mexico should want to be inspired to care for and say, we love this place for what it is, not for what we can transform it into for other values. That you can have, you can play golf a thousand places, but you can't come to a thousand places and see the big sharks and see a healthy system that should serve as a source to inspire us to want to restore health to other places too. Thank you very much. Vamos a hacer una pausa y regresamos a este programa especial de Foro TV conversando con Silvia Earth. 